practical here. I'm going to be doing the extraction of clove oil from cloves. So here are the cloves I'm going to start off with, and this is what I'm going to extract. This is the molecular model of eugenol, which is the synthetic name for clove oil. So the apparatus I'm going to use is, as you can see here in front of you, we're going to generate the steam, in this steam generating flask here. The steam is going to come through this rubber tube here into our cloves, extract the oil from the cloves, continue on up here across the still head, and then the steam and the clove oil will come down through the condenser, condense on the inside of, of the condenser, and drop into the conical flask at the end of the reaction. And I will then do an extraction using a separating funnel. I'll extract the clove oil from the water that comes across. When putting the reaction apparatus together, you will have to cut the glass rod to the specific size you'll be using this reaction. I'll now demonstrate to you how to cut the glass rod. Using a very fine file, and here is my glass rod. So gently rotate the glass rod while sewing the file back and forth. And once you've scored the entire circumference of the glass rod, you can now snap it. Wrap a piece of tissue around the glass rod and gently snap, and you'll see that the glass rod will have been scored and broken. To set this practical, start off with moving a tripod in underneath where you're going to clamp your steam generator. So a steam generator is just a quick fit conical flask. Clamp that in place. Then you need to add boiling chips into that. A small pinch of boiling chips is ample. And then add in your water. For this setup, I need an adapter to change the quick fit size, which is a B19 into a B14. And then I'm putting a T piece. So when my steam is generated, it will continue up here across this T piece. Now I must put in my escape valve for my steam in case the reaction gets blocked. So I put a thermometer holder here and a glass rod in that thermometer holder. And make sure you insert this glass rod right down to the bottom of the conical flask and then up slightly. Next I need to put some rubber tubing to connect this P piece onto the pear shaped flask and keep this rubber as short as possible. Connect that then onto my glass rod that I've cut to the required length and that then can attach onto again another size thermometer holder that matches the glass rod. I've already put in my cloves into the pear shaped flask and gently insert the glass rod until it goes to the bottom. And then just lock that across here. Then clamp that up in my retort stand. At this stage you may need to readjust some of your glassware to fit. Clamp it up. When the steam gets generated, it's going to come across the still head. My still head fits in here. And that can be stoppered like so. I can attach BB clips to hold the apparatus together. This will ensure a nice tight fit. Now I can put my condenser. Notice the water is going in the bottom of the condenser in this tube and out the top. BB clip that to ensure I add my dropping arm. I'm a conical plant to receive the clove oil. Now the reaction is ready to go. So first of all I need to turn on the water and then turn on the gas. And then light the punch burner. Now 
With this practical, trying to keep the heat in the steam as much as possible makes the practical go a lot smoother. And for that reason, I'm going to insulate the transfer tube from where the steam is going to go from here to here. I'm just going to wrap that with tin foil. That will help insulate the steam and ensure the practical goes a little bit quicker. So now we can see our water is boiling. Our steam is continuing up into on our T-piece, down through the lagged rubber tubing. And you can see how there is some condensation on the inside of our pear-shaped flask. That steam is extracting the clove oil or the eugen oil from the cloves. The steam then continues up the flask into our T-piece here. Then it goes down the gas of the steam and the clove oil hit off the side of the conical flask and turn from vapor into liquid and then drop into our conical flask clockwise in here so we've extracted and now we've got an emulsion of clove oil and water collected in our conical flask. Next step of this reaction is isolating the clove oil from the water using an extraction in cyclohexane. As a safety note we have this tube. If for some reason the container gets blocked, any of the containers get blocked and the pressure can't escape, which I will demonstrate by pinching the pink tube, you will see the pressure comes up this tube here, as you can see, so that's actually the steam vent in operation. The final part of this practical is the extraction of the clove oil from the water. For this, we need some cyclohexane. Now, cyclohexane is immiscible in water because cyclohexane is non-polar, water is polar. So I'm going to transfer my emulsion mixture of water and clove oil, again, ensuring the tap is shut into my separating funnel. And that is my clove oil, or eugenol, and water. I'm going to add the cyclohexane. So take note when adding the cyclohexane to see if does it go on the top or the bottom of the water. I'm going to add in a small amount to start off with. And you can see how the cyclohexane is on top of the water. So this is the layer of cyclohexane where the clove oil is going to go. So I'm going to add some more cyclohexane in now that I remembered clove oil, sorry, that cyclohexane is on top of the water. Stopper this tightly, then shake the separating funnel, making sure the cyclohexane and the water solution mix perfectly. That's extracting, if there's any pressure build up, open the tap periodically to let any pressure build up escape. What this is doing now is you may notice, or you should notice, that the milkiness is disappearing from the water layer and that's because the clove oil is going from the water into the cyclohexane. So we can make sure everything has been extracted. Let the solutions settle and take off your top stopper. Open the tap and I'm going to let the water layer run out into my beaker. So my eugenol and cyclohexane will be, and then I'll close the tap. My eugenol and cyclohexane will then be in the top layer. Let the water all run out. Close the tap. And now I can carefully put my cyclohexane eugenol solution into the beaker. Cyclohexane evaporates off at room temperature, so when I come back tomorrow morning, all the cyclohexane will evaporate it, and I will have totally isolated my eugenol from the cloves. I will now have a sample of eugenol from solid cloves.